Welcome to Mythic Deviant. I'm C. Gabriel, and today, Rumble Stiltskin. Once upon a time, there was a miller who had ego issues and a beautiful daughter. So when he met the king, he bragged to the king, my daughter is incredibly beautiful. And this king seemed unimpressed. He'd met many beautiful women. So the miller said, and she can spin straw into gold which he totally made up on the spot. But the king was intrigued. Really, can she bring her to me? So the miller went home, and he took his beautiful daughter, and he handed her over to the king. And the king locked her in a small room and said, Your father says you can spin straw into gold, so I need you to do this overnight, and if you don't, I will kill you. And he locked the door. So she had no idea what to do. She did not know how to spin straw into gold. So she just sat down and she cried. And a little man appeared. And when the little man appeared, he said, what will you give me if I spin the straw into gold? And she said, well, I will give you this beautiful necklace. And he said, all right, done deal. And he took her necklace. And in three whirls, he filled up the bobbin. This is the bobbin. And he moved on to the next one. And he did this all night until the entire room was filled with gold. So when the king returned, he said, wow, that is wonderful. That is so good. I'm going to give you another chance. She thought, ah, I do not want another chance, but I'm getting it anyway. And he locked her in a larger room. He said, all right, now spin this straw into gold. And if you do it, I won't kill you. And then he left locking the door again. So she sat down and she cried once more and the little man appeared and he said, what will you give me now if I spin this straw into gold? And she said, I will give you my ring. And she handed him her ring and he said, done deal. And he spun all the straw into gold. There was massive amounts of gold. So when the king returned in the morning, he was delighted. He said, wow, you have done so well. And he thought, well, she is pretty good looking. And clearly, she has an endless supply of wealth. So if you spin this straw into gold, he said, moving her into a much larger room, tomorrow I will marry you. And if you don't, tomorrow I will kill you. And he locked her in the room. This was a big conflict for her, as she neither wanted to marry him nor to die. And so she sat down and cried once again, and the little man appeared. And he said, now what will you give me if I spin this straw into gold? And she said, I have nothing left to give you. And he said, oh, you do. I would like your firstborn. And she thought about it, and she thought, well, I'm going to die anyway. And the fact is, I might never have a firstborn, so maybe this is all right. And so she agreed to it because what else is she going to do? And he spun all that straw into gold. So in the morning when the king returned, he was so delighted that he went ahead and he planned the wedding and the two of them were married. And within the year, they had a beautiful baby. And the little man appeared. He said, thanks for having this wonderful firstborn. I'm going to take it now. She said, I will give you all the wealth in the kingdom if you will just let me keep my child. He said, I do not want the wealth of the kingdom. I want to have a living thing. But then she began to cry, which was clearly a weakness for him. And so he said, well, I will let you keep your baby if you can guess my name in the next three days. And he left. And she thought, this is so strange. But all right, his name. So she got a messenger and she asked him to comb the countryside and find the names of everyone who lived in the kingdom. And the messenger left to go do that. So when the little man returned the next day, she gave him a list of all the common names. Are you John? Are you Tim? Are you Chad? And he was none of the common names. And he left again, said maybe tomorrow. When he returned the next day, she gave him all the uncommon names. Are you Bartholomew? 
Are you mutton chops? Are you spindle shank? And he was none of the uncommon names either. And he laughed when he left. But that night, the messenger returned and said, I went all over the country and I could not find a strange name. He said, but then, then as I was walking through the forest, I turned around a bend and at the bottom of a mountain where the foxes and the hares said good night to each other, I heard a little man singing and dancing around a fire and he sang that his name was Rumpelstiltskin. And she said, that is wonderful. And so the next day, when the little man returned, he said, what is my name? And she said, hmm, is it Tom? And he said, no. She said, is it Harry? He said, no. He was delighted. So she said, is it Rumpelstiltskin? And he was horrified, horrified, and he began to scream. And he picked up his legs and he ripped himself in two. Or he was swallowed up by a big spoon and taken out of the realm. Could go either way. And the reason that I'm picking this story to tell tonight is because I feel like we are so at a place in our lives communally where we are standing here with a lot of straw that we need to figure out how to spin into gold. How are we going to take the mess that we're in and transform it into something that is wealth for us? So gold represents a sort of spiritual value in fairy tales and in myths. And so we're really looking for the ways to take our problems and use them for our own elevation, for our own enlightenment. So in this story, there's a lot about the power of names. And I'm sure you've heard, say his name, say her name. The chanting of names in our culture is also a big thing right now. What is the power of naming? So first, she says the common names. Are you something usual, something I know, something I'm familiar with? No. And then she moves on to the uncommon names. Are you something strange, but still something that we're aware of? And in fact, it is no. And then the messenger finds him in the woods where the fox and the hare say good night. That's outside the borders of normality. So the fox and the hare normally are not pals. Rumpelstiltskin lives in a world where the normal rules do not apply, where predators and prey are friends. So he, in one hand, he lives in a world where there is no harm on the other hand, he lives in a world that is so unfamiliar to us that we don't really understand it because we have such a mindset of thinking predator and prey when in fact, he lives beyond that scope. And when he arrives, she uses three names for him. The first two are very common. And they give him a false sense that he has won. But she is also, in proclaiming two common names before his very unusual one, telling him that he is not so special. That his name, while unusual, is not unique and is not powerful. In fairy tales, names often contain a great deal of power. The gods can be called by their names. The creatures can be sort of bound by their names. In this case, she is binding him and setting herself free by diminutizing him with his own name in relationship to the common names that she issues first. So what names are holding power over us now? 
What names are outside of the bounds of what we understand that we need to identify and that we need to own? In what ways are we beyond the borders of what we normally know and in a territory where we need to essentially take powers that have gone out of control and bring them to a place where they are within us, where we can name them and where we can therefore own them. Just the recognition of them tears them in two. What are the energies, what are the archetypes, what are the powers right now that are holding us hostage that we can diminutize by naming them? I hope you give that some thought, and I hope you have a fantastic week. It's lovely seeing you. Take care.